Hi everybody. Well, it's been a while since I've posted a video, but I thought I'd give you a walkthrough of the greenhouse since you really only see nothing but pictures. It's generally pretty mild in here. It's the middle of February. It's about 25 degrees outside. However, in here with no supplemental heat going, we're at about 58 degrees, somewhere in that neighborhood. And that's just passive solar radiation. So I want to give you an update on where my crops are. And as you can see here, uh, we have some arugula, some buttercrisp lettuce, and a bunch of different kinds of lettuce that really seem to be taking uh, really, really well to uh, being out here and uh, growing just really, really well. Even in the really cold winter spring, in the cold winter weather, it really is doing very, very well. Um, you can see snow peas are doing extremely well, and snow peas are a cold weather crop anyway, so I would expect them to do well. But uh, the amount of growth on them is just crazy, and this is something that's a little bit of, a, of an interesting phenomena, and that is that they will actually pick and choose what they'll attach to. And as you can see, they seem to like this pretty well. So we have some parsley and some cilantro, which are coming in nicely. Uh, this is flat leaf parsley in the back and a little bit of cilantro. We have some oregano. This is a, a yellow squash plant that I just brought in from the house. I germinated the seed on the inside in my uh, little hydroponic garden that most of you are used to seeing. I'm going to out today and set it in. It's just growing in a rock medium, and uh, the roots look really, really good. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with the, way it's, uh, with the way, and I think it's ready to come outside. Other snow peas, uh, some a little bit more mature, obviously, than others. Another yellow squash, some more cilantro, uh, another yellow squash there in the back. Some really good shard coming in, and I've been taking clippings off the shard pretty regularly and uh, cooking it up with a little bit of garlic and some onion and so forth, and really, really tasty. Uh, some more snow peas uh, looking really good. Uh, I don't know if you can see that really well, but we're starting to get supplemental leaves on the inside, which is the, basically saying that it's about ready to start producing snow peas. So I'll um, be looking forward to doing that in a little while and picking those. Unfortunately, some of them did not fare so well. This was a garden bean that is kind of struggling to survive, so I'm going to have to do something with this one. And unfortunately, um, the pulse heater burned the uh, green pepper plant a little bit, so I'm going to put him a little bit further back. I've started some other little supplemental herbs, uh, which are thyme and chives, and uh, these are things that need warmer weather, so I'm going to uh, probably have to end up uh, letting them grow a little bit slowly until such time as they're ready to grow and the weather warms up, and the strawberries, which are for the most part dormant right now. Uh, they do keep their greenery, and they do have a really good root system. You can see the mass of roots there. But uh, come the warmer weather, when these are actually detected, it's okay to grow. These are going to sprout out like crazy. A couple of pepper seedlings, uh, again, not a warm weather crop. These are not doing very well. They're kind of slow and they're kind of weak. I may just end up regerminating some new seeds inside and uh, bringing them out when they're ready. I've got some beets that are going. Um, beets are kind of a finicky plant. They don't. Uh, they generally take pretty well, but they need a lot of room. So these are just to uh, get them started, and then I'm going to move them over into the perlite beds and uh, let them grow to their full size there. We've got some salad greens, some spring greens, which are coming along pretty nicely. Got some basil, and uh, I like basil a lot, so I usually grow five or six plants at a time. So uh, we use it a lot because I, li I like to make pesto. And onions. Now these are all red pearl onions, and I am using them for um, salads and soups. So I don't want big, gigantic onions, and I don't want to chop up the pearls. But you can see what the, an interesting factoid about them is is that when you cut them, they will immediately start to regenerate, which is kind of nice. Um, so you can continue to use the same onion over and over and over and over again. And I didn't know that, but I, I uh, had watched a YouTube video on it. Um, some other hydroponic grower has been using the same onions over and over and over again, and uh, they've just let them just keep cutting them off and cutting them off and cutting them off. And that's what I intend to do with these. But the uh, growth is really good, even despite the fact that we're still in, a, in the middle of winter here in Chicago, and it is cold outside. So I've got some other plants in here. Uh, this is an orange hibiscus, and uh, it is kind of 
in towards the center because it is uh, not really meant to be alive during the winter time, but it seems to be holding its own pretty well. As the days have gotten longer, it seems to have come along a little bit better. I've got some Indian ginger here, which is really kind of a flowering uh, plant. It's a tuber, and uh, it did really well this summer up here in Chicago, which I'm really surprised at. So it's gone dormant for the season, and that's fine. I've got some um, Chicago fig, or Chicago hardy fig is what they called it, but it's really kind of a cold-tolerant variety of fig. And some of the greenery that was on it earlier has started to die off, and uh, that's okay because the rest of the stem is nice and firm and uh, doesn't give a lot of way. It doesn't feel brittle or crackle or anything like that. So I know that the plant is still alive in there, and uh, when it comes time for it to bloom, I, I fully expect it's going to bloom like crazy. The uh, thing I love the most is the citrus up here. And this is a tangerine tree. Uh, it's only got a little bit of the yellow leaves in the last couple of weeks because it's been really, really, really overcast here. And uh, supplemental heating has done a lot to keep the temperature kind of steady in here. But uh, these things can be really, really temperamental when it comes to cold. So I am doing what I can to prevent them from uh, losing all of their leaves. But I was reading online and uh, they can actually survive a cold winter. Uh, not too many and not horribly cold, but they will uh, they will survive down into the 30s if they're protected and they are protected here. Now these stocky stemmy things that you see, those are cherry trees and those have gone dormant for the the season. And this is new growth coming up, which is kind of nice because um, up until recently there was nothing growing in that pot, but this main stalk, and the main stalk did really well this summer, but uh, it's obviously starting to sprout out because it's got plenty of what it wants. So we have lemon and lime and tangerine. Uh, the dwarf uh, pomegranate has gone uh, dormant for the winter. It uh, unfortunately does not do well in temperatures less than 50 degrees, and it does get to be 50 degrees here overnight. So um, again, just testing the stems. Stems are nice and pliable, so that means that the plant is still alive, and it will take uh, probably fairly well when it actually comes back around. This is a mixed fruit tree plant, and if ever of you have gotten uh, any of the advertisements from Burpee or uh, Burgess or any of the other 900 different types of uh, gardening centers that all pretty much share one inventory site, this is called the mixed cocktail, the mixed fruit cocktail tree, and up until about a month ago, it had all of its leaves on it, and it's just unfortunately recently that it started losing its leaves, and uh, there weren't a lot to lose, but nonetheless it did lose some of them. But again, the test on this is always just to check the stem and make sure that the stem is nice and pliable. The stalks are nice and pliable, and they are, so I'm, I'm not concerned that the tree is going gonna, is gonna to die anywhere. This little guy in the back is a purple perennial hibiscus. Now, I didn't know that there actually were perennial hibiscus. This is something we picked up at the garden center. And the great thing about this is, is that all of this growth at the top will die off in the winter time. And then being it perennial, it will actually grow back again. Now, this had flowers, and I'm, and I'm sure there's probably a, a picture of it somewhere on the website. This had flowers on it that were probably no less than about a nine inch dinner plate around. And uh, it was pretty spectacular. It has a nice, really pretty purple color to it. and really just really was crazy with growth. So uh, I've been doing just a simple water bath on this one, giving it the nutrients that it needs. And uh, this one will, I'm absolutely positive, come back in the, in the summertime as soon as the temperature starts to go up and it detects that it's okay to grow. So that's the greenhouse for now. Um, one of the questions that somebody keeps asking me, which I think is really interesting, is what do you do for winter? And what do you do for water in the winter? Well, winter is about water, actually. So all I really do is I just go out and collect up five-gallon bucketfuls of snow, dump them in the reservoirs, and then the natural heat in here will actually just melt them all down. So these are 18-gallon tubs. They line both the walls. They're all connected in series, so I have roughly about 200 and 220 gallons at any particular given point in time if you take into consideration these larger tubs in the back. So
So at any one given point in time, I've got plenty of water to feed all the plants in the recirculating system. So uh, I don't ever run out of water, and I kind of look forward to snowy days because the uh, snow is actually good. It's much, much better and cleaner generally than uh, water you get out of the tap because it's been distilled through the natural process of snowing. So uh, that's a greenhouse update for now. Any questions or comments, leave them on my Facebook page. Thanks very much. Bye.